All right. Welcome, everyone, to today's Webmaster Central Office Hours Hangout. No, but. Oh, no. Wait wow. We... This is my vlog. What are you doing? I, this is not a I'm Webmaster like starting Central. A video. <laughs> starting like, a is video. Is it not how you start a video? For all those watching, we are at the Google offices in Mountain View, California. This is the Google Webmaster Conference not. Product Summit. And uh, I convinced yes. John to do this interview. So I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, thanks for coming over, Barry. So how was the day? It was amazing. It was, I think it was one of those events that really shows how Google cares about the Webmaster community. So thank you for doing it. And I think I've learned some things. I'll tweet up, I'll share a bunch of it on my blog and you could tweet reactions to it when I do that. Cool. <laughs> okay, so for those who don't know you, but I'm sure every single person watching this video knows who you are. Right? Can you just tell people who you are quickly? You started the intro already. I'm John Mueller, I'm, Webmaster I'm Trends John Mueller, uh, Webmaster Trends Analyst, uh, not here, but at Google Switzerland. And part of what we do are essentially office hours, hangouts, where people come and join us and ask us questions. And today we just have Barry asking questions, which is great because he collects a lot of questions from the rest of the web. So it's kind of concentrated, I guess. But I'm not going to be asking you today about Bert. Or no about much. EAT, or about Bert eating EAT. I'm going to ask you about other things that people probably don't ask you about. Okay, so let's, let's go for it. Let's let's first start with what was your first job as an adult? First job as an adult. I I guess it depends where you make that cutoff. I I think my the the company that I worked for before joining Google probably falls into that category because I started that uh, while I was still in in high school in Switzerland and I ran that essentially through through my university and I I guess that's kind of where I, I became an adult I guess I don't know like maybe I'm still a child so <laughs> maybe Google is the first job as an adult but. Uh, the, the company that I that I had there was essentially a software company making software for Swiss medical practices. And along the way, we started doing various other things for medical practices, which included websites and included making a website for our own company. And I guess that's kind of how I got started in all of this website stuff anyway. Because like at some point, I was really proud that we were ranking it all for our company name, like on page four or five or something. <laughs> And then you kind of realize, well, actually, it would be good to rank first for your company name, at least. It would be good. So that's, that's, that's when all of this crazy stuff happened. It's interesting. You, have a, you started your company in high school, because I did the same thing. Oh, but cool. I didn't, I didn't give up on my company like you. I'm just joking. I give up. <laughs> oh, come on. So mean. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It was joking. so painful. Was it hard to leave? Was it hard to go to Google and leave your baby? Yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the transition in general was pretty hard, also on the people working there, um, because you have to find someone to kind of take over. Right. And then it's like, oh, you didn't pick me. Uh -huh. that, that was really painful. And uh, when, I, when I joined Google, I kept my office at, at my company because I was like, I'm just going to try this out. Uh -huh. Like, I'll probably be back soon. It's not. And then a couple of years later, they're like, John, can we kind of get rid of your desk? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the company's doing okay right now. Yeah, yeah. that's great. That's awesome. That's I, I didn't realize that. I didn't know you you had this company and you had to like kind of give it up um, to do what you're doing now, which is helping everybody watching this video and beyond the webmaster community, publishers, and so forth. So thank you for doing all that. Thanks. Um, so talking about it, it used to be a webmaster, like you said. Um, I remember you back in the old days using your company name as your profile name under the creative site forums and other forums in the SEO community. That was before the days we actually used our real names. So I don't know if you have any like memorable moments from like those forum days or it was just like one big I I think the the one thing that uh, that I I still remember and I try to take into account with a lot of the things I get uh, is uh, there there was Eamon Jones yes. Eamon Jones on, on the forum and creator site and one of the things that he would always do is take the, the questions that were coming and try to turn them around and say like, well, what is it that you really want? It's like, I can help you solve this technical issue, but is that really what your business needs or do you need to actually rethink what, what you're trying to do? And kind of that reframing of, well, there's a small technical thing that you could be doing to actually what you should be focusing on I, I think that's something that I still keep in mind all the time. And people come to me with all kinds of these technical questions like, what do I do with my keywords? How long should my title be? And 
often the, the answer is not, like, I can give you a number, I could look that up probably, but it's not what you should be doing. So what does that number usually give people? 46, what was the number? Um, no. Not six. No, no. <laughs> but no, that's interesting, because yeah, most SEOs, even to this day, don't think about it that way, and Amon, or Amon, however you pronounce it, sorry, Amon, <laughs> He's been thinking about that well before there even was the term SEO because he's he pre, pre, predates yeah. all that. So thank you. And then you moved to Google after that, uh, I think in 20, 2007. I think you were like one of the first people in that position in terms of being a Google Webmaster Trends Analyst. I don't know if that was the title they gave you then. It was the title when you got there. And yeah, yeah. So we, we actually had two before me, uh, Jonathan Simon and Susan Moskva. Okay. Uh, they were in Seattle with uh, the Search Console team or Webmaster Tools team back then. And I, I just had this really long transition time because I, I needed to make sure that everything was working well with my company. So basically when I got the okay from Google, I was like, well, I'm gonna need like a three quarter year time. And they're like, oh, we, we need people. Yeah, right. So I, I think they kind of started first and for some reason I stuck around. It was a little bit more persistent, I guess, I don't know. Did you kind of ask who was who interviewed you, or was it multiple people? There were multiple people, and most of them I don't remember, which is really awkward. But uh, was it was Matt Cutts involved at all? I, I talked to some people from the web spam team. Um, I, I had my interviews here in Mountain View, so I flew okay. over from Switzerland over to Mountain View to do the interviews, and the first couple interviews were all via VC. So I was talking with people in, in Seattle. Uh, From here, they flew in exactly. here for a video conference. Interesting. Yeah, so that that was kind of weird in the beginning, but there were <laughs> also people here. So uh, it was really cool to meet some, some of the folks that, that were working here. Uh, I met Miley, Adam, Adam Lasnik. Yes. Uh, you probably remember Brian White, Matt Cutts as well. And you also met Vanessa Fox back in the day then, too? Um, I, I she wasn't didn't there. meet Vanessa during the she interviews, left, she I left. think. Okay. Yeah. She was already maybe gone by then. So when you did that transition, I remember you had an XMX advanced show, and you kind of like hinted to me, like you kind of, I don't know if it was like early, like you were just hired or something. You had to unlearn some things. Were there anything that surprised you the most when you joined Google? It's hard to think back that it's been, what, many years, so 12 years um, now? Yeah. I, I don't know, unlearned. Uh, Not necessarily unlearned, but anything that comes to mind that was like most surprising to you? I, I think the, the biggest thing that was surprising to me was that Google was not really that hierarchical as I thought. So I thought I was gonna join this big American company and it's like there's bosses and bosses and bosses and bosses layers. Uh, but kind of joining Google, it felt a lot more like a small company in that you're working within a small team, you're trying to get your goals done, and there's nobody always like standing over your so shoulder watching to see what you do every day. Uh, so that- I was standing over your shoulder watching. Well, but, yeah, I didn't. but less so, I guess, in the early days. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's true. But uh, that's, I, I think that's also the reason that why I stuck around because I thought, well, this big company stuff and like people kind of watching over you all the time, that's not really my thing. Like coming from your own company, it's like you're used to freedom. Uh, so that, that was really surprising. From technical stuff, I, I'm sure there are lots of things, but like nothing it's comes to, to remember, mind. Yeah. Cool. Um, one thing that kind of like, for me at least, is pretty surprising about you is that I don't know how you do it all. I mean, I know people ask me all the time, how do I do it all? But you get the brunt of it by far. I'm not, I don't work at Google. I don't know how you deal with answering so many people all day long. Every single Christmas, every single New Year's, you're also on there helping people. And often the questions are kind of repetitive in some nature. But correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you do this because you know what it's like kind of be in a situation where you had clients that were in these situations, you were in maybe in certain situations throughout your career, and somebody posting a question on Christmas Day or on New Year's, and their business is not doing well, is that why you go in, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, but is that why you kind of go in there and help people? I, I think that's definitely a part. Um, and it's something that when when you interact with, with the, the community online, you, you see that quite a bit, that people really have their livelihood at stake and they sometimes just have questions where they're unsure. And a lot of these questions don't really matter exactly what, what they need to do. They just need kind of a reassurance that they're on the right path. And uh, I, th I think that's still important to give. And uh, especially with the, the more repetitive questions. It's something where I think the SEO community overall looks at this and say, well, I've, I've seen this question a million times, like we should ask something new. But 
these are things that people worry about. It's not like if, if they keep coming back to these questions that they worry about them, then I think it's important to answer them and not just say, oh, well, we talked about this last year. Does it get hard like to hear some of these stories? I mean, I get emails like fairly frequently about how my business, I had to fire people. It's not, obviously you're not pressing that red button that removes somebody from the index or penalizes somebody, but it got it. I mean, I guess over time, maybe your skin, you have to must have the thickest skin in the world <laughs> because of what people say to you and Google and whatever. I, yeah, I, I don't think I don't think it gets any easier. It's it's always tricky when you when you have people that you're talking with where you realize that kind of their their business model or the the plans that they had lined up they they don't really work with the current generation of Google or right. with the current generation of the web and these things change over time. So it's something where. L looking back, you can look at the business and say, well, they should have diversified. They should have done more in, in other directions. They should have kind of kept up with the times more. Uh, but like all of these should have things, like that time is gone. You have right. to look forward from where you are now. And sometimes you have to make tough decisions along that way. For sure. Anyway, I appreciate you doing this. I don't know if you hear this enough, but you deserve to hear it enough. The amount of stuff you do for the community, sometimes the responses you get are definitely not warranted in a negative way, I mean the negative responses you get. Um, the SEO community does love you by far, so thank you for everything you do. Oh, thank um, you. And uh, we just all appreciate it. So from, the, from me to the, from the SEO community to you, we appreciate everything you do. Oh, um, and thank you very much. For those who aren't following you online, what's the easiest way to, to follow you? On Google Plus, um, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Not on Google Plus anymore, unfortunately, but I, I'm active on Twitter mostly. and. Tweet at me if there's anything up uh, that, that needs to be addressed, and I'll, I'll take a look. Yeah, He's good at responding, too. So one little thing. I don't know if we have time for this, but I'll play a little game. OK. All right, so I did some auto search completions. And I typed in one of the questions was, Google is, and the autocomplete, I don't know if you can see this, Google is your friend. What comes to mind when, when you see that? Google is your friend. I. I don't know. I, I think a part of what makes Google your friend is maybe that it helps you to find answers to, to things that you're worrying about. And a lot of times, these are things that you don't have anyone to ask in person. So you find somewhere online to try to ask these questions. And you'd like to get some kind of objective answer. Uh, so I think maybe that's where that falls in. I don't know. OK, let's get to something a little more interesting. Uh-oh. Domain authority is important. Is it important? So we don't use domain authority uh, at, at Google for, for web search. But I, I think, in general, these, these kind of metrics uh, are, are useful anyway for, for some sites. And sometimes it makes sense to, to have these kind of third-party metrics. Even if they're not used by Google, maybe they help you make business decisions. And that's fine. Like, I'm not going to say like, domain me... authority is stupid or you should never use it. Right. But it's, it's like a metric. Someone put it together. I, I think the idea behind it is to mimic something that Google might have. But even if Google doesn't use it, it can still be used. So let me be honest with you. In the early days when people kept mentioning domain authority and asking you questions about that, I thought they meant, does Google care about the authority of a domain name? I didn't realize they were mentioning the Moz metric. So I don't know if there's confusion around that when people are asking the question. Like DA Moz metric. For me, that was my confusion early, early on, just so you know. Yeah. It's anyway. similar, I guess, to, to page rank, where people sometimes say, like, my page rank dropped, and they don't mean the page rank score, but right. like the that ranking too. of yeah. a page. Yeah. Is page rank coming back in terms of uh, a search control feature? No. Okay. No. Talking about dying, one of the what? first responses SEO is dead. SEO is dead. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think we should just move to machine learning for everything. <laughs> what do you think? I like, think that. I think ML and AI and D. No, I'm joking. I think this is, that's the future of search. So, kind of like that brain implant that we talked about at the conference. The brain implants. We talked a little. That bit. was before that weird white flash. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's a bit radioactive. I think so. Which brings me to my next one. Bananas are radioactive. So bananas are awesome. I I put them in my Twitter profile. I added bananas. Mostly because I needed something to put into Google Trends so I could just see how Google Trends emails look. And now it keeps sending me these emails saying, like, popularity of bananas is going up. <laughs> and so I put it in my Twitter profile. And now... You do a lot of these little subtle things that are like inside jokes 
within the Google a team. A little bit, and I guess. First, probably even people at Google don't people at Google don't even know. Maybe make yeah. you laugh, right? Yeah, it's kind of like that cheese thing. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do you did you hear the story about the cheese? Did I hear the story about the cheese? No. What's the story about the cheese? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so. Um, you love cheese. Where, Why I, I, I love cheese. So I didn't actually tweet that. It was on the shirt, but it wasn't for it you. It was actually on my shirt. Yeah, I, someone made a, a shirt out of a tweet that was on my account, but I didn't actually tweet it. Um, I, I think I went to get a cup of water or something, and my oh, laptop yeah. was open, and guess. Gary is like, oh, Twitter is open. <laughs> and it probably <laughs> took a lot of self-control to hold back from writing something really, really bad, but... I, I got yeah, I love cheese out of it. Well, that worked. It's, yeah, I don't think any. It was fun. I, mean, I don't think anybody. I didn't know that that Gary is that like public. I guess. I, well, it is now. I guess. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, I appreciate you giving that inside scoop on the secrets to Google's ranking team. Well, you're not on Google, but close enough. Cheese is how you rank well. Awesome. Thank you very much, John. I appreciate you doing this. Thanks for having me, Barry. Yeah.